Every so often, another video will surface on YouTube titled something along the lines of why you should play Oblivion in 2021, or what Oblivion did better than Skyrim. I've been part of this trend making my own video on the topic about a year and a half ago. These videos tend to be one part clickbait, one part nostalgia, and one part minor criticisms of Skyrim, and most often they're made by gamers who played Oblivion in their childhood, and view it with very much rose-tinted glasses. Oblivion isn't a bad game, in fact, I still think it's better than Skyrim, but I also have to be realistic. Oblivion suffered from bad level design, awful voice acting, poor gameplay, and numerous other issues, but today I'm going to try and be as objective as I possibly can. I think there are three distinct areas that Oblivion excelled in that should be taken into account by Bethesda in developing the Elder Scrolls 6. The first is Oblivion's groundbreaking Radiant AI system, undoubtedly one of the greatest feats of human ingenuity. Stop right there, criminal scum! I am of course just kidding, Oblivion's AI is famously shit. So the first real area which Oblivion nailed was its bittersweet ending. In the game's final act, you race to defeat the Mythic Dawn, the cult that's attempting to summon the Daedric Prince Mehrunes Dagon by lighting the Dragon Fires. The Dragon Fires act as a safeguard against Daedra invading the mortal world, and they can only be lit by an Emperor wielding the Amulet of Kings. In the last moments, when you think Martin Septim, voiced by Sean Bean, will be crowned Emperor and will be able to light the Dragon Fires, Mehrunes Dagon suddenly appears. To throw the invader back into the abyss, Martin has to sacrifice himself, transforming into a dragon to fight Dagon and close shut the jaws of oblivion forever. Or she can rejoice in the defeat of Mehrunes Dagon, in the process we lose Martin Septim. Skyrim's main quest is epic, but it's bland and predictable. You defeat Alduin in a final battle, the outcome of which is wholly positive. What Oblivion did with its bittersweet ending was add a sense of gravitas not otherwise present in Skyrim. Bittersweet endings make you more reflective on the journey you've been on, on the characters you've met and subsequently lost, and also on what the future holds. After I finished the main quest in Oblivion, I was pensive. When I killed Alduin in Skyrim, I felt pumped but that was it. Gameplay wise, Skyrim was superior to Oblivion in almost every single way, but there are still things Skyrim did badly, and Oblivion well, that should be factored into the Elder Scrolls 6. The first is rather niche, but still important, spell creation. In Skyrim, you're limited to casting spells you can learn from books. In Oblivion, you can make your own. From combining existing spells to optimizing spells to discovering new ones, the spell creation mechanic made being a spellcaster that much more interesting. Equally, I think that the Elder Scrolls 6 should take inspiration from Oblivion's class system rather than Skyrim's dumbed down skill tree. It's harder to commit to a certain build and to create a build in Skyrim's more open system not to mention there simply being less choice on how to define yourself. More importantly, perhaps, The Elder Scrolls VI can't take itself too seriously. Oblivion had a good sense of humour, something I thought that was lacking in Skyrim. The dour mood was punctuated by moments of lightheartedness, such as the mission where you have to murder everyone at a party. The rest of the guests, your victims, are convinced that they're locked in for some sort of treasure hunt. <laughs> You're a funny one. Good, I'm glad one of us has a sense of humour about all this. Also, don't forget the hack dirt quest line when you have to infiltrate a village of cultists who run around naked in caves. I think the Shivering Isles DLC encapsulates perfectly the willingness of Oblivion to be wacky. The main quest in the DLC is literally about slowly becoming the God of Madness. I also recollect that one quest where you have to help a big-headed Argonian find his lost fork. Many of Skyrim's quests were great, but they were often too serious and less memorable than Oblivion's. It's fine to have an epic, serious tale to tell, as long as there's some room for laughs along the way as well. Finally, The Elder Scrolls VI should eschew Skyrim's pacing for Oblivion's. In Skyrim, every faction you join, be it the Companions or the Legion, puts you on a pedestal straight away. You become a student at the College of Winterhold, and five minutes later you're its most trusted member. Soon enough, you defeat Ancano, finish the quest, and you're the Archmage. Comparatively, in Oblivion, there are tons of prerequisite quests you have to do before you become more than a mere runt. These missions aren't dull fetch quests either. In the Dark Brotherhood, some of the earliest quests were the most entertaining, such as murdering a pirate captain or sneaking through an abandoned fort to poison a dying warlord. Skyrim's more popular than Oblivion for a reason. It sold millions more copies and it's had a far wider cultural reach. It's become a classic, but that doesn't mean that Oblivion's irrelevant and that Bethesda should ignore it in developing The Elder Scrolls VI. Skyrim excelled in some areas, but fell short in others. In these areas, 
Oblivion often did better. So I hope that Bethesda keep in mind these things when they're developing the Elder Scrolls 6 and hopefully we can have a game that's the best of Skyrim, the best of Oblivion and the best of Morrowind when it eventually comes out.